And it's definitely been an interesting dynamic in the past year and a half, the amount of women compared to the amount of men. So I think both men and women can make excellent speakers and do a phenomenal job. There, it's interesting though because um, men or women, it doesn't matter, you both do the same things. And I think, and JT points out a lot, that he thinks a lot of women could actually be better at business than men because women, this is nothing, guys, this is nothing against you. There's two main differences. Women are usually very good at building and maintaining relationships, right? Women are usually just a little bit better in keeping in contact, remembering when birthdays are, um, reaching out to people and really keeping that relationship going. Where men are usually a little bit better at selling, okay? Men and women can be great at both, but that's kind of when a woman really learns how to sell and a man really learns how to keep those and maintain, maintain those relationships. Those are kind of the two areas. And I, I'm saying this as a woman, right? Sometimes we do such a great job of building those relationships, we don't always like to ask for the sale. Right? We're just not always the best at asking for the sale and saying, are you interested? Where guys tend to, right, these are overall terms, right, I'm not talking about every guy and every girl, but overall men are a little bit better at saying, okay, are you ready to buy? Right? So that's kind of those two areas where both sides have a little bit of area to kind of grow and improve. And sometimes that's why um, a business that has a man and a woman partnering with each other can be really, really good because now you're bringing up both of those sides and appealing to both audiences. So like I said, over the past year and a half, we've really been focused on looking for and helping to build more speakers out there. So at some point, JT won't have to travel quite as much, um, even though I don't think he'll ever give it up. But he won't have to do it quite as frequently as he is now. So one of the biggest things is to always remember is that your mind is, is more powerful than your excuses. And not to be driven by your excuses, right? We all can come up with a million reasons why we haven't done something yet. But it's not about the reasons why we can't. It's telling ourselves all the reasons why we can and all the reasons why we should. And I know I feel like um, this morning we have a lot of great stories shared and I'm really emotional because it's changing that mindset to think, what happens if I don't do this? Right? Where am I going to be if I don't take action? If I don't push myself to the next level? And that's really what you kind of have to start thinking about and shifting your mindset to is that you can do this. Right? And it's not about saying um, someday. Right? We can go through all the days in the week and someday is in a day. Right? We've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Someday, not to be confused with someday. Okay? So it's all about doing things in the now and taking action now and not waiting for something to happen later. So, like I said, JC has been traveling around the world and he speaks at a lot of different events, right? So JT does events like this, which are small, which are free, which he doesn't even necessarily, he doesn't make money doing events like this, but he's doing this so he can find and create and build more speakers. But what I love about JT and the time that I've known him, working with him and not working with him, is he's all about how can I give opportunities back to other people? How can I give other people the opportunity to spend time with his coaches, to have stage time that he would have, to interview celebrities that he has? What can he do so it's not just about him and building his brand, but give people those other opportunities? So this is JT on stage. Um, this was in Germany, actually, at the NAC event in Munich last year. As you can see, he's very, very good at getting on stage and having a phenomenal stage presence. But it's not just about him being able to get on stage. 
he gives other people the opportunity. This is actually me on stage, which I never had any desire to be a speaker. I never thought I would be a speaker. Being a speaker for me has been phenomenal because it's actually helped me um, build my own marketing company even bigger. Because I use it as a branding and credibility tool when I'm pitching a new piece of business or I'm talking to a new customer or client. Because when you can go with this marketing company that has these results and these case studies, um, or you can go with my marketing company, which has these results in these case studies, and I've been able to speak in 44 different countries to business owners and entrepreneurs on marketing and branding. Right? It adds to the credibility and it lets me build my business. I don't sell, I'm not a platform speaker, right? So I, I know when I said platform speaking is the best way to make money as a speaker, I know because I'm not a platform speaker. I don't sell products or programs um, or coaching. Occasionally, I do coaching for some of JT's clients that it makes sense for, but I don't have like my own coaching company or anything that I don't have time for it, really. Um, but he's given me those opportunities, too. Right? He's given a lot of the people around him those opportunities, just like Rajiv earlier today was sharing a lot of those opportunities and how they've really helped him in his business. Um, Obviously, this is him, and this would be all of you when you get off stage. All of a sudden, you are now famous, right? I told you, you get up on stage, it gives you that credibility, it gives you that branding. So now when you get off stage, everyone wants your picture. Everyone wants to know who you are and what you do and how they can learn from you, which is where it leads really nicely into the coaching program. This is... Um, this is in Germany as well. This is one of our German students that JT at that NAC event let her come up on stage, gave up some of his own speaking time to be able to let her come up on stage and build some of her branding and her credibility. This is Oi, who's one of our um, students in Singapore, who he's given Oi a lot of time um, of his stage time when he's been in Asia, which now she, never even really thought about being a speaker before. She's doing her own events now, um, all over Indonesia, um, Singapore, Kuala Lumpur, Thailand, she, Vietnam. She's been speaking at different events and offering different products and programs that she sells because she's really wanted to start giving back to help other women in those different Asian communities learn how they can build a business and they can be successful for themselves. Because in Asia, the culture is just a little bit different, right? Um, it's not as, it's a little bit more male dominated than women. And it's not as common that a woman would go out and start her own business. It can happen, it's just as not as much common thought there. So Oi actually has four different businesses, all in Asia, and she's really taken it upon herself to speak specifically to women on how they can start building their businesses as well. Um, that, here again is me, JT gave me the opportunity, now a few times, but to speak in South Africa. I never thought I would speak in South Africa. And for someone here today, we will have the opportunity for you to actually travel to South Africa as well and speak at one of our events in South Africa, just as Rajiv has, just as I have myself as well. What I love, right, from all the stuff that I've been able to do with JT, I've actually been able to be featured on the same magazines that JT has. Technically, my cover came out before his cover. <laughs> and he's not here, so I can tell you that, and he won't be mad about it. Um, so maybe I opened the door for him to be on the cover of a magazine. I'm not really sure. But he, get, he welcomes and he gives people those opportunities because he's really become about how do I build up the people around me as well. It's not just about him, but it's about everyone that's around him and how can he share in those experiences and help build everyone else up. Now, one of the biggest events that JT does every year is called the JT Fox Family Reunion. Now, when I say the JT Fox Family Reunion, it goes against everything I said earlier because you don't understand what it is and I have to actually explain it to you, okay? Right, so do as I say, not as I do. Um, no, when we typically, when we are marketing it to people, we call it the JT Fox MBA, Marketing, Branding, and Analytics. The three areas you need to grow your business. So people that don't know JT, that makes a lot more sense because we understand marketing, 
Um, we understand branding and analytics is knowing your numbers, so that's how you build your business. Now, to those people that know JT, or what we call part of the family, um, a lot of us have these um, little plastic wristbands, right? So, um, and they say on them, you can probably see on mine, they say family first, okay? And there's different colors mean different things. Um, the orange one is the speaker one. Um, but these wristbands, JT really treats the people, um, his students, his customers, his clients as family. And he doesn't have the best relationship with his own family. Kind of, um, he was kind of that dork growing up who was often told like he wouldn't really be successful. Um, his parents um, weren't the parents that were very, you can be whatever you want to be. You know, they were just kind of, he, he was, it, ironically, he was a starter as a child, okay? Now he's one of the world's uh, most top producing speakers, but as a child, he was a stutterer. So, I mean, he really knows from his own experience, you really can do whatever you want to do as long as you're willing to do whatever it takes to get there. Now, the people that are in his family, um, we, that's kind of the mantra of family first. And there will be people that are family members from all over the world that will know each other, will connect with each other, friends, probably, right, you've probably experienced it, where you have friends that probably on Facebook that you have no idea who they are, right? But they're very encouraging and supportive, and it kind of becomes this community in this family. Because JT feels like we really are his family, and we're all very supportive, and he's very supportive, and he, um, lays awake at night worried about how can he make all of his family members successful. That's what he lays awake. It's not about him, it's not about his business, it's not about what he's doing next, but it's what else can I be doing to make everyone else successful and make everyone else's uh, visions a reality. So for the people that know JT, calling it the JT Fox Family Reunion makes sense because it's the one time of year where we do a huge event where everyone from all over the world comes to one place for, I think, we're, I think now we've expanded it to like five days. Yeah, five days now. It went from three days to four days. Now we're up to five days where everyone really gets to connect, network, um, speak, and there's a bunch of different celebrity keynote speakers. So last year the event was in Orlando, Florida, and we had something like 1,500 people from all over the world. It was like 60-ish countries last year. So it's all these people, I will tell you from going to JT's events as both the attendee and now working them, you pretty much don't sleep for the entire time that you're there. Because during the day, there's all these amazing speakers and things going on, and then at night, that's when all the magic happens. In the sense of, that's when everyone's going out with each other, they're at, like the bar in the hotel stays open even later, because everyone's at the bar, networking, connecting, meeting each other, right? And it's one of those events where everyone's up till four or five in the morning, and then the event starts at like seven or eight. Right, and so for days you don't sleep, but it's some of the most fun that anyone ever has in being able to meet people, network, and connect. So last year, some of the speakers that we had, um, we had John Travolta, we had 50 Cent, we had Calvin Klein, clothing designer, and we had Randy Zuckerberg, who is Mark Zuckerberg's sister, and now has her own marketing company, was, but was the former VP of marketing. Because just like we were talking about earlier, keynote speakers, we have these people come as keynote speakers because these are different people in different areas of business. And yes, celebrities, right? Like John Travolta, 50 Cent, those are more celebrity names. You don't think of them as business people, but they're actually brilliant business people as well, right? We don't just have. Um, movie stars that are movie stars. We have movie stars come that have also gotten involved in real estate and different business ventures to be able to not only have that star power, but speak to on how they've been able to build their business and what they've been able to do investment-wise and the different things that they've been able to do, which makes these events a little bit different. Because most people will get, you know, 
for a keynote speaker, like I said, they'll get um, the Richard Branson, right? That's who they'll get. Well, that's who a lot of people get. Most people have never seen a business event with John Travolta as a keynote speaker. Right? So it's kind of a unique opportunity that JT actually creates. So it's different people than you would expect to hear speak at an event. Now what's also really awesome at this event is he gives a lot of his family members the opportunity to speak on stage. So this is actually um, Julie, that little uh, blurb up there in the pink. Um, Julie is from South Africa. Here's another picture of Julie. She's from South Africa and she lives in Durban. She is a real estate agent. She has, she has her own brokerage. She's a real estate person. And she decided that she really wanted to build her brand as the <laughs> real estate brokerage in Durban for people to go to. So she had the opportunity to speak on stage. And it's not just that she spoke, it's that she's from South Africa, went all the way to the US and spoke on the same stage as John Travolta, 50 Cent, Calvin Klein, um, Randy Zuckerberg, Frederick Eklund, right? She shared the same stage as those people. So then after she returns back to South Africa, now she's featured in the newspaper and she's featured in the media for having gone all the way to the U.S. to speak. Remember I said you speak on stage, it doesn't matter what industry, it gives you a level of credibility and authority, right? Because now you're traveling around the world to be a speaker that has that level of credibility. Has a, you must be the person if you're the one that is going all the way to the United <laughs> States to speak on real estate. So it really helped her kind of escalate her brand to the next level. She was doing really well in property, but now her brand is just exploding in South Africa. Right? Every time I see her, she's like, well, I had to hire another person, and now I had to get an assistant. And now she was telling me the last time I saw her, which was about two, it was in February, mid-February, when we were in South Africa last. And she was like, the other day, she was like, I was out having breakfast at this little cafe and somebody walked right up to me and was like, oh, you're Julie. And she was like, yes. Right, kind of hesitant to be like, why are you approaching me? And she was like, oh my gosh, I've seen you all over. I've seen you all over social media. I've seen you in the newspaper. I've heard you on radio. I'm not ready to buy a house, but when I am, I'm coming to you. Right, that's such a cool feeling to know that your brand has really been able to have that level of an impact. So Julie was able to do that thanks to having that opportunity. So JT, another thing that JT started doing, which um, is pretty incredible, normally he interviews the celebrities. The celebrity speaks, then he actually will get up there and he'll interview that celebrity for usually about an hour. Um, that's how he's really able to build some kind of rapport with that different celebrity and get them to do some kind of crazy things on stage. And I'm gonna show you, um, since he's not here, I'm gonna show you some of those crazy things that he's gotten celebrities to do. And some of the crazy things the celebrities have gotten him to do on stage as well at these different events. Um, but here is another student of ours that is actually from Denmark. And she had the opportunity to get on stage and interview John Travolta. Right, it almost doesn't matter what question she asks, how he responds. Just like Rajiv was saying earlier, it's, oh yeah, I wasn't able to return your email as quickly because I was in Orlando interviewing John Travolta. Right, like that's a whole nother level of credibility, that now you're the person that's actually interviewing these different celebrities. So he did it with all of the different celebrities that we had, with different um, men and women from all over the world. Here's someone else that is from Amsterdam, wearing the Amsterdam orange tie, right, representing his colors, who also was able to interview John Travolta. Um, here is Natasha, who is a, she's actually a matchmaker and dating coach. Okay, really interesting, and from when JT first met Natasha, and I've done some coaching with Natasha as well, she was charging her clientele about, and she's in Canada, so about 10, 10 to 15,000 Canadian dollars to do matchmaking services, right? 
So she now um, interviews John Travolta. This is last November. I just saw her last week in New York, and she told me that she finally just picked up her first matchmaking client for 100,000 Canadian dollars. That's quite the upsell. I think we could all agree, right? And so her and I, or her and I were talking, and she was like, "Yeah," and she was like, "And now I have two more that I'm like I'm about to close that are at that same price point." And I'm like, "Natasha, that's amazing." And she's like, "I am scared shitless." <laughs> and I'm like, "Why?" And she's like, "What if I can't match them?" <laughs> And I'm like, you're so good at what you do, though. You're so good at what you do. You know what you're doing. And she's very adamant and very good at she does not sign someone on unless they want to be matched. Do you know what I mean by that? Like, she's very good at saying, okay, this person is a serial dater that is not actually looking for a relationship versus somebody that really is looking for that relationship to settle down. And so now... She was able to charge so much more. This is from November to I just saw her last week in New York, and she signed on that client about a month ago. In between there, she had also picked up a couple of clients at about the 50000 Canadian dollar mark, right? So she's been growing her price point, and a lot of it, she said, is from that branding. Up uh, from, you know, she's been able to be on stage with John Travolta, and she did ask him a question about how has he been able to um, keep, right, as a celebrity in Hollywood, how has he been able to be married to his wife, Kelly, for so long? You know, what's kind of been the secret to their success? Because we all know in Hollywood, it's kind of like front page news of how these, you know, together, married, breaking up, like it's just nonstop. So that's kind of the question that she asked, but it's almost was completely irrelevant because that positioning had really been able to build her business and build her brand to the next level. Again, here's Oi, who Oi was interviewing Calvin Klein. Now, I will tell you of all the different celebrities JT has ever had, all of them are some of the most amazing people, are so friendly, are so down to earth, are so warm, except Calvin Klein. Okay. He was one of the most difficult people to work with. Um, he, at the end of it, when I was walking him to the car, I think he calmed down a little bit. But I think he just wasn't really sure what he was getting into, right? He doesn't need to be speaking, right? And I think somebody, his agent or someone convinced him, hey, why don't you look at speaking? You could make some extra money doing it. But I don't think he actually wants to be doing it, which is fine. He's a fashion designer, right? Speaking is not really in his thing. He's more of a creative person. Um, he did not enjoy the experience very much. However, from this picture, you wouldn't necessarily know that, right? And Oi is still on stage, and she's interviewing Calvin Klein. Remember I said that she um, she is in Asia, and she has multiple successful businesses. Well, one of the newer ones she's trying to get into is in the fashion world. So now that she can say she was on stage, and she was interviewing Calvin Klein, right? That gives her some credibility and some branding when it comes to that. Um, here is Adam, and Adam is from the UK. Now, Adam, a little bit different, he actually is in the car industry. Okay? He um, has multiple car dealerships around the UK, but he wanted to actually start his own event business. So essentially, he is doing exactly what JT does, and JT is coaching him to do exactly what he does. And this is something that I give a lot of credit to, where JT is literally out there creating his competitors. But he doesn't view it like that. He's not like, oh, I don't want to share this, or I don't want to give this away because I'm creating my competition. He feels like there's more than enough people, there's more than enough room, there's more than enough space where if that's what you want to do, I will help you. So Adam actually interviewed a lot of different people at Family Reunion, but one of them was actually 50 Cent, which enabled him to open up the door to some different entertainment people in the UK that now come and speak at his events. 
right? So it's just giving that branding and that credibility option where JT, this is time out of JT's, right? Normally a celebrity will come for about two, two and a half hours. So normally they would speak for an hour. JT would interview them for an hour. JT is giving up his interview time to let other people be able to interview those different celebrities. Instead of him asking an hour's worth of questions, he'll do one or two questions instead, all to give other people that opportunity. Um, here is one of those videos, remember where I said where JT sometimes gets celebrities to do some um, crazy things? Is, did you, let me make sure my volume's on. Because it's really not as fun. I mean, it's fun seeing it, but it's not as fun if you can't hear it. But JT is able to somehow establish this rapport and this connection with people. Um, it doesn't matter who it is. He is able to really bring them out and um, get them to do things that they normally would never do. So here is one of those examples. <laughs> like 
totally different life, right? Living on the beach in Costa Rica, teaching yoga, but then realize, okay, this isn't really for me either, right? I'm definitely not stressed. It's much more laid back, but I can be doing so much more. 